Hello everyone, I'm Vladimir Yakovlev, the head coach of the traveling windsurfing school Magic Wind. Today I will show you how to quickly set up your equipment for maximum efficiency before going out on the water. Many people don't know that tuning their gear wrong takes away up to 30% of riding efficiency. Do you have any idea how much that is? That's why it is so important to learn how to do it correctly. There are a few positions to set the foot straps on any free ride board. The first is the beginner's position. The second is the advanced position, and the third position is for professionals pushing for maximum speeds. In the first position, the foot straps are set closest to the center of the board. This option will suit those who are just learning to plane and use the foot straps. In the second position, the straps are set one step wider. This setup is suitable for those who already have no problems getting into the foot straps and ride in them most of the time. The setup gives more control of the board when planning. The third position is for experienced surfers who strive for maximum speed. This position makes it harder to get your feet into the straps as they are further away from the center of the board. When strapping in, there is a big chance to overload the rail of the board, miss the strap and catch the water. As the board is moving, there is water pressure on the downwind side of the fin, which tends to knock the board over. The higher the speed, the stronger the tipping momentum, and to battle this, the straps are set closer to the rail of the board. The longer the fin, the wider the straps should be placed along the rails. There are a few sets of holes for self-tapping screws on the inserts of the foot straps. You can put the straps a little closer or further from the nose of the board. For the most part, this is a fine adjustment, noticeable to experts only. That's why I suggest screwing the self-tapping screws to the front position until you get bored with simple planing and want to experiment. Now let's talk about setting up the foot straps themselves. The width setting should match the width of your foot. If you have small or narrow feet, you can use special stops on your foot straps. By turning them around, you can reduce the width of the foot strap even more. The height of the foot strap should be adjusted so that you can see your toes on the other side of the strap. The strap should hug your foot completely on all sides, not just at the top. The foot strap must be easy to get in and out so that your feet don't get stuck when you fall. Setting the foot straps for jumping is a little different. Jumping will be much more comfortable if the straps are set closer to the center of the board. The foot is placed much deeper into the strap than usual. This allows you to control the foot pressure on both sides of the board. And most importantly, in the case of a fall, the foot in the loop can turn freely, thereby reducing the risk of trauma. Now let's talk about setting the boom height and adjusting the harness lines. The boom height is set between the height of your chest and your shoulders. If you use big sails and wide boards, you need to set the boom even higher, because the foot straps are further away from the mast foot than on smaller boards. The average length of the harness lines is measured from your wrist to your elbow so that you can easily put your elbow through the loop while holding on to the boom. If you find that this length is too long, you should update your harness skills, as all the equipment has long been developed taking into account the use of long harness lines. The distance between the ends of the line on the boom should be equal to the width of your fist. On sails over 7 square meters, you can place the ends wider than one fist, and on sails less than 5 meters, you can leave just 2-3 centimeters between the lines. How to find the power center of your sail without going out on the water? There are three options that I recommend. First, measure by weight. Second, measure by a quarter of the boom. And third is run a diagonal across the sail. The first option, by weight. Approach the sail from the mast side. The sail should be in the windshade. Lift the sail by the harness line with one finger. See if the sail is balanced horizontally. Second option, determine visually the middle of the length of the boom and then divide it in half. The third option, my favorite, draw an imaginary median line through the whole sail. The intersection of this line and the boom is where harness lines should be set. All these methods allow for a small margin of error, but usually it's within 3 to 5 centimeters. As soon as you hit the water, you will have no problems fine-tuning your harness lines by moving them back and forth a couple of centimeters. A more accurate way to adjust the harness lines while on shore is possible only when there is wind. Bring the sail into the maximum power position. Shuffle your hands along the boom in search of the balanced grip. The best place for your harness lines will be exactly in the middle between your hands on the boom. 
You can achieve precision of harness line placement only by feeling while riding. The exact mounting point as well as the center pull may change depending on how you set the sail, how hard you sheet in when planing and how strong the wind is. In the next videos you will learn more about how to fine-tune the harness lines while riding. If you like this video and would like to improve your level of windsurfing, welcome to Magic Wind Windsurfing School. Subscribe and follow for more videos like this. Enjoy your ride, bye!